What's up, y'all? It's Brendan from Modern to Me. I'm not from the South, but I said it anyways. And today we are learning about parameters. Okay, so we still have my method from last tutorial, and we are going to just alter it slightly so we can learn about parameters. Let's just take out all this and take out all of this, but we're gonna keep my method. Okay, so as I was saying in the last tutorial, uh, parameters are what you see in these parentheses right here. You see that uh, you have string args, and that would be what is considered the parameters for the main method. Okay, so let's make some parameters for my method. Okay, let's just call it int param1. So now if I tried calling uh, my method and didn't put anything in the parentheses, it's gonna freak out. It's gonna say, yo, dude, there's supposed to be something in these parentheses, because it's gonna say, um, as you can see if you're reading it, it says that it's not uh, applicable for the arguments, the parameters. If you're not putting anything in the parentheses, then it's it, there's no function that matches up with it. So it's gonna expect something to go into parentheses once you declare uh, something for the arguments. Okay, so since we're saying that there should be an int Let's make an int in the main method. Just, uh, let's just call it, um, it's always so hard to name variables. So let's just go uh, <laughs> int one. I am so creative. Okay, and we'll set it equal to 12. Or let's go 13, because I think this is the 13th tutorial, lucky number 13. And so we're gonna pass in int one. And now what it's going to do is it's going to uh, pass this int1 uh, variable into my method. So now we need to actually write my method. So let's just have a simple output method. Okay, and we're gonna output param1. See, I can't refer to int1 because int1 is in the main function. It's out of the scope. See, I can, I can never, you can never refer to a variable that isn't within the scope. And when I say scope, like, you can see this method here, there's a curly brace here and a curly brace here. When I'm in, when I'm in this method, I can only refer to things that are in this, this uh, scope. And this is not with, this method is not in the scope of this method. It's in the same class, but it can't access things in this method. So if I, uh, if I typed, well, if, if I finish off this statement here, you'll see that there's no error or anything. But if I try typing int1, not in 11, in one, there's gonna be an error saying uh, it can't be resolved to a variable because it doesn't think it exists, it can't see it. Okay, enough of that, enough of that tangent. We'll do a param one, and then we'll just say like param one plus four, just to make it a little different so you know that uh, things are working. So we should get 17 because it's passing in uh, 13 and then adding four. This won't actually change the value of param one or of int one. But uh, I'll talk about that in a sec. Let's just run this. And there you go, 17. Nothing tricky there, just 17. Okay, easy enough. Now what you can also do, just real quick, so I'll, sh I'll show you real quick. I could just put in 13 because it's looking for an integer value. It doesn't have to necessarily be a variable. It's kind of like with, with operations I was just teaching you a little bit ago. You can multiply a variable by another variable or just by another number itself because it doesn't make a difference as long as uh, the values match up. It, the computer knows that this is an integer. So I'm passing in an integer to the function and that would still come up as 17. Uh, I, I'm sure you guys trust me. I don't need to run that and bore you with that. Okay, now let's... Uh, Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to keep things the same. I'll keep this as a... Here, actually, I need to go back a little bit. I'm just going to control, control Z this. Okay, I have int1, and I'm passing int1 into this method. And now, what you might be tempted to do is, if I change this method a little bit, um, if I just have this and I say uh, uh, param1 is equal to uh, 15, and just have it do that. Now that can work, and if I output if I output this uh, param one, nope, not that into the semicolon. There we go. And now if I output this, control F eleven, you you get fifteen. 
So you can change the value of this parameter even though I'm passing in 13. But what's not going to happen is if, is if I output this uh, in one right here, I'm going to get 13 right here. You can see I got 13. Because when you pass in a basic data type, such as uh, an integer or a float or some other uh, primitive, they're called primitive data types. When I teach you all of those, the ones we've learned so far are int, float, and double. But those are not going to get their values changed. You're just passing in the value itself of the variable. You're not actually passing this, this physical location in memory of this variable because that's how variables are represented there's somewhere in the memory of the computer you're not passing that in you're just passing in 13 so when you set this param equal to 15 it's not actually changing the, this value what you need to know is that this value is going to stay untouched it's different for classes but we're going to get into that later so just know that this isn't going to change okay now uh, real quick, I'll just do something a little more with my method. I'll take all of this out right here. And I'll take all of this out. Uh, if I can accomplish that. Okay. Now, you can actually have multiple parameters in one method. So I can go int param1, int param... Oh, I need a space there. Int param2. And that is completely legal. You can have... As far as I'm aware, you can have as many parameters as you want. I don't necessarily think there's a limit until your computer runs out of memory. So now if you type my method, my method, and you, if you only put in one in value, if you just put in like 12, that's not gonna work because now it's expecting two parameters. So we need to go like 12 and 56. Okay. Now let's have this function, oops, system.out.println, let's have this function print out the sum. It's kind of a useful, a useful function, well, kind of more useful than the other one. I keep saying a function, but functions and method are, are essentially the same thing, at least in my eyes. They're, diff they're called different things in different programming languages. In Java, I believe they're only referred to as methods. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Okay. So now we're going to run this, and we see that we get 68. So these two values are added together, and it's just kind of a simple example of using more than one parameter. There might be something more useful, like if you're making a game and you want to put some graphics on the screen, you might put the X coordinate, the Y coordinate, the width, the height, the location of the file. You might have like five parameters just in the this uh, draw graphics function. That's something I've definitely done before. I think I've had up to like six or seven parameters just for uh, uh, in an engine, just for um, uh, outputting graphics. It might be a little excessive. You might want to narrow it down a bit to have it be something a little more simple, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. All right, in uh, the next tutorial, we're going to be talking about uh, the value void and changing that up a little bit. So we'll be learning more about return values is what it's called. I will see you guys there.